The footage you're seeing on the screen was recorded in 4K at 30 frames per second. And here's the same footage slowed down to 50%. And today I'm going to show you how to do this in DaVinci Resolve 18. So the first thing we want to do is make sure our clip is selected. You can either right click and go to Retime Controls or use Control R as a shortcut. You'll notice below here, you'll see this 100%. That's where your speed is currently. We're going to click on that drop down and change it to 50%. Now, as we preview this, we see that although it's slowed down, it's pretty choppy. And we want to get rid of this excessive motion blur as well and decrease the choppiness. So to do that, we're going to head over to the top right corner, click on Inspector, click on the Video section, and look for Retime and Scaling. For Retime Process, we want to choose Optical Flow. Now you could use Nearest or Frame Blend, but I find Optical Flow gives you the best results. For Motion Estimation, Try to not go as far as enhanced better if possible. Speed warp is going to give you the best results, but it's very GPU intensive and it's going to bog down your computer. For scalings, I set it to fit or fill and resize filter. I leave it on smoother. You can experiment with these settings. This is what works for me. Now, in order to preview it, you are going to have to render the clip. So if you go to playback, go to render cache, pick smart, which will render it automatically for you, or click on user if you want to do it manually. You can right click here and click on render cache color output. Mine's already enabled. So you'll notice this blue bar here. That just means that the clip is rendering now. As you can see, it's taking some time because again, it is a very intensive task. I'm going to show you the usage on my system and you'll see that it's maxing out my graphics card. Now, once it's rendered, you'll be able to preview the clip. But for my preview, I'm going to put a side by side so that you could see the before and after results. Notice how much smoother the after is. The next one, I stretched it to 40%. And I think this is as far as I could go with this particular clip. Now I've had some success slowing it down even more to 25%, but your mileage may vary based on the clip that you are using. Now with that being said, it's not a foolproof method. As you see in this example, when the light shifts over, you can see that tearing happen. In this next example, you're going to see tearing in the curtain there at the back, which doesn't make this very usable. Now, obviously, this also works for 24 frames per second, or even if you have 120 frames per second footage that you want to slow down to mimic close to 200 frames per second, you can get pretty close to that. Now, one quick tip I have for you, if you're going to use the speed warp option, what I would do is identify the clip that you're going to use it on, right click on the clip, change the clip color to identify which clips you're going to use speed warp on, go back into retime and scaling and use one of the lesser settings or just switch it to project settings. It really doesn't matter. That way you can still edit on your timeline without bogging down your computer. And just remember to change it to speed warp when you're going to do the final render. Now, if you're wondering how to do speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve, make sure to check out this video next. For now, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.